this episode of the A to Z of Hutton Space, we focus on the small but fascinating system Stein 2051. This binary system, 18 light years distant from Sol, is situated in everyone's favourite giraffe shaped constellation, Camelopardalis. You may know this constellation as the unintended target of the long dead 20th century probe Voyager 1, which is, even now, crawling towards it. The probe will pass within 1.7 light years of Gliese 445 in only another 38,000 years. Unless, of course, some commander decides to make it illegal salvage and attempts to pass it off on a black market as an ancient relic bearing gold disc. Hello from the children of planet Earth. Stein 2051 contains the sixth furthest white dwarf from Sol, but is the closest red and white dwarf binary system. Stein 2051A, the red dwarf, is the brightest star, but it is only a third of the mass of its dimmer white dwarf companion, Stein 2051B. This is one of only three Hutton systems to contain a white dwarf, the others being Van Manen's star and Leuton 145-141. The white dwarf has a carbon oxygen core and was very likely a type G star in its former life, which spanned over 11 billion years, or over 80% of the age of the universe. Stein 2051b is named for its discoverer, Dutch Roman Catholic priest and astronomer Johann Stein. It became one of the very first white dwarf stars to have its mass accurately determined using the gravitational lensing method in the early 21st century. Stein 2051b has a mass of only 67% that of Sol, so is just about half the Chandrasekhar limit, the limiting mass that determines whether a dying star will become a white dwarf or a neutron star. In either case, you don't want to get too close to these stellar remnants, as terrible things may start to happen. And whatever you do, you certainly don't want to get stuck in the jet cone of these stars. Being a white dwarf, Stein 2051b is not supported by thermal pressure, as in a main sequence star, but by electron degeneracy pressure. Note that this is very different to trucker degeneracy pressure, which is where your friends i.e. those people you probably just met in that bar, who will encourage you to drink far more than is good for you and commit foolish acts that will land you in some degree of bother with the system authority. Jumping into the dimmer but more massive B star is rather convenient, as this is where the more interesting features lie. The Red Dwarf has three dark and dead icy worlds in orbit, while Stein 2051b has eight orbiting bodies, including two gas giants, which are mildly more interesting. However, the bar remains very low. Unsurprisingly, the inner planets are unremarkable cold worlds, victim at some point to the death cycle of their star. The first planet, a high metal content world, is close in mass, gravity and orbital distance to Venus in the Sol system, but the next five are cold, barren, rocky bodies. The two gas giants lack rings, but are orbited by the only bodies on which to surface prospect for materials. Stein 2051 has two starports, each only able to accommodate small and medium ships, as the small economy has never warranted large pads. Rennie Landing orbits the first planet, and Boeing Station sits ten times further out, orbiting the first and larger of the two gas giants. No surface starports exist, but there is a small station at Grant Point, on the outermost icy canyon-riddled satellite of the first gas giant, who will discourage you from getting too close and shoot at you if you do. The economy of Stein 2051 is based on refining, exclusively from the satellites of the gas giants. With the exception of the antisocial elements at Grand Point, the entire population of 125,000 lives exclusively on the two outposts, and a job here can certainly be considered as a hardship posting. Hutton first expanded into the system on Halloween 3303, which is inadvertently celebrated by the pirate banners at Boeing Station. The Halloween mention isn't just a cheap last-minute attempt to get a Frankenstein gag into the script. Honest. Mm -hmm.